Liz Truss will argue that the disruption caused by her economic plans will be worth it in her first conference speech as Conservative leader this morning. But will everyone actually benefit from these plans, as the Prime Minister seems to think? Joining us now is the Foreign Secretary, James Cleverley. Very good morning to you, Mr Cleverley. Um, now, she says that the disruption is going to be worth it. We've already seen disruption, even for her own speech. Andrew Pearce from The Mail, natural Conservative Party supporter, said that he fears there's the conference hall may be half full or half empty, depending, depending on your vision, because of the train strike. Let's try and fix uh, the train strike first in this interview. How are you going to do that? Well, look, it's quite clear that the, uh, the leadership of the rail unions have uh, put this strike in place specifically to disrupt the uh, Prime Minister's speech. Of course, one of the great advantages we have now is this thing they've invented recently called the Internet. So even if people aren't able to physically sit in the hall, they'll be able to listen to the Prime Minister uh, online. You can do so on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to look in uh, uh, on that. Um, because the Prime Minister is going to say really, really important things. She is going to make the point that we have got to go for growth. We have got a strategy for growth. She's cutting tax for hardworking families across the country. 30 million people will be seeing uh, their uh, uh, tax reduce. We're supporting people to pay their energy bills and we're going for growth zones, investment zones around the UK to boost the economy. That's what she'll be saying and people will okay. want to listen to that. OK, and, and the train drivers say they're going for growth as well. They want a cost of living increase to their salaries. That's why they're disrupting um, train travel. That's why they've staged the strike today. And as the Prime Minister says, disruption is worth it. So what are you going to do to help them out? So, so the, uh, the, the rail drivers, the rail union, have got a very, very good package of remuneration and other benefits. I think many, many people, my commuters, who have to travel to work on the train in order to earn money. There are people who, if they can't get to work, they don't get paid for work. You can't be a cleaner by uh, a Zoom call. These are the people who are being disrupted. I think it's deeply, deeply unfair that the rail unions are putting those people at such disruption when they are themselves on really very a, a, a very good overall package. And what they should do is they should spare a thought for those people who, if they don't get to work, they don't get paid. Those are the people I'm worried about. Frankly, those are the people I think the union bosses should be worried about. The thing which is hard to understand, Mr Cleverley, is that yesterday we had uh, Michael Gove, your former Cabinet colleague, Lord Frost, the former Brexit negotiator, even your Cabinet colleague Penny Morden, all saying that benefits should rise in line with inflation. And if they're right about that, and I don't know if you agree with that, surely the rail workers are also right to say their wages should rise in line with inflation too, or is Penny Morden wrong about that? The rail workers are on a very generous package. This is not, I'm not going to make this interview just about the rail workers, OK? Point is, those of us who are in government, backbenchers are different. Uh, you know, Michael Gove, backbencher, if he, wants to, if he wants to say what he thinks, he's perfectly entitled to do so. But in government, we're in a privileged position where we get to feed directly into the Chancellor, to the Prime Minister, whether it be Cabinet, Cabinet committees or, or, or other ways. My view, call me old-fashioned, my view is that that is the best way of feeding ideas into the so, decisions... So was Penny Morden wrong to say what she said yesterday? Year ..to implement... Was so, Penny look, Morden say, wrong to say what view, she said? My, prefer my preferred view is to feed in... Look, Ed, you, you've been a minister. You've been a very, very senior minister. You know the best way of doing these things because, ultimately, we have to abide by collective responsibility. So my view is to feed these things in the, uh, in the usual channels because, ultimately, we're going to all have to put our shoulder, shoulder to the wheel to deploy the decisions that the government has made, the decisions which will bring down taxes for 30 million working people, increase the support we give them to pay their bills, drive that growth through all parts of the UK. We're all going to collectively got to do that work. And so, therefore, when we feed ideas in, as I say, better to do it through the usual process. It must process. be a bit frustrating for you, for you, though. You've got Penny Morden saying what she said. You've got the Home Secretary talking yesterday about a coup. I mean... There's you sticking to the script. Why aren't your other cabinet colleagues doing the same? Isn't it a bit annoying? Well, look, I can only do what I do. 
you know, uh, you know everyone, everyone does their job uh, slightly differently, but for me, as I say, uh, I, I know what I know what works for me, and I I know what I think is the best way of uh, uh, you know interacting with your political leadership and your parliamentary uh, and ministerial colleagues. That's what I'm going to stick to. It's worked for me thus far. Foreign Secretary, I'm pretty happy with how it's worked. Foreign out. Secretary slaps down Home Secretary shock. <laughs> That's what you said. It's not what I said. <laughs> is it what you did? <laughs> what I said is that. The long-standing convention of how we feed in decisions seems to have worked, and that's what I'm sticking to. Um, it, it wasn't long ago that uh, you were going to abolish the tax rate of 45 pence. Uh, then, of course, we know that the Chancellor and the Prime Minister staged a U-turn over that. Leaving aside anything else, everything else, how do people trust what the Prime Minister says today. Because, for instance, when she eventually does make up her mind on what's going to happen to benefits, those people in receipt of universal credit need to know that that decision is going to stick. And what we've seen is that the things that she decides don't stick. So, Susanna, in your question, you said leaving aside all the other stuff. Well, I'm not going to do that because it's all the other stuff that we wanted to be talking about. That's why we took away the uh, changes to the 45p tax rate, because it was completely making it impossible for us to discuss all the other stuff. That's why we took that away. But what that other stuff was is really, really important. It was protecting families against increasing energy bills. It was cutting the income tax rate for 30 million working people. It was about giving uh, uh, financial support to the people that needed support, giving a boost to the parts of the country that needed a boost. It was about generating growth in the UK economy. These are all the things that Liz said she was going to do. And if, you're, if your fundamental question is, can we trust Liz to do the things she said? She said she was going to cut taxes. She said she was going to go for growth. She said she was going to in, uh, uh, invest in infrastructure. She said she was going to unlock the potential right across the UK. That's what she started doing literally day one in the job. Yeah. So if people want to know if Liz is as good as her word, that's what she is doing. But the rabbit out of the hat was the abolition of the 45p top rate of tax. And she said she was going to so do it. So the 45p... The... And then she did So, didn't. Susanna, let me, let's just remind ourselves... And I don't... I'm not sure, Mr Cleverly, whether... The rate yeah, but, but why... Was like, ..was, like, less than 5% of the value of that overall package. Mr Cleverly, so you and I have sat through so many of budgets. what she said we have, she is delivering. We have sat through so many budgets over the years, both of us. The final thing the Chancellor said at the end of his speech was, I'm not going to cut the 45p rate, I'm going to abolish it, and everybody cheered. It wasn't a little thing, it was his finale, his grand moment. Most of that announcement was about cutting the taxes for 30 million working people, protecting them from energy price rises investing in infrastructure, going for growth, investment zones around the UK. That was the vast bulk of that speech and absolutely, rightly, that's what we're absolutely delivering. Okay. That's the stuff that people feel in their paychecks. That's the stuff... When, when, when those energy bills come in and they haven't gone through the roof because of our intervention, people will recognise that we are sticking to the plan, the growth plan, protecting the people that need protecting, of course, absolutely, the right thing to do, but also going for real growth in the economy because, ultimately, that's what benefits all of us. Mr Cleverly, one final, just really little question. Um, did you find out <laughs> yet... Did you find, <laughs> did you find out yet why and how your department, the Foreign Office, spent £1,800 last year in the Norwich City Club shop? I, I, I haven't looked into that, but look, one of the things that... So Maybe one of the things that We'd I love have to know. Uh, ..learned very quickly... Well, look, uh, uh, one of the things that... One of the things that, that, that I discover is that people around the world love this country. They love memorabilia, they love gifts, they, they, they love things that remind them of their interaction, their relationship with this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful country. So, if as part of my job, and, and perhaps part of Liz's job, we actually reflect that, then that is no bad thing at all, because Gosh. people love us. And, and look, I know, I, I know you're... I know, I know you might be a little bit biased 
Uh, a little bit biased in this question. Can you imagine? You've turned Ed, up on an official but, but, visit but Norwich to City New Zealand, is beloved, and globally. they give you Norwich City club memorabilia. I mean, goodness me. Anyway, why would you not I, love that? I oh, think come you, on. I think you should you get to the bottom of this one, Mr. Cleverly. I think you should get to the bottom of it. Thank you very much indeed. Enjoy the speech this morning.